New Notion page layouts are here. A few weeks ago, Notion had their first in-person conference, Make With Notion, where they announced a host of new features, one of them being page layouts. Now, I have not yet gotten a chance to fully take advantage of this new feature in my own Notion workspace just yet, so I thought it would be fun to bring you guys along with me while I update my own Notion pages. Let's dive in and create some new page layouts. Notion layouts are made to be applied specifically to database pages, meaning if you have a page that's not part of a database, say your dashboard page, for example, you won't be able to use layouts on that page. But that's okay because layouts are mainly here to help you organize your database properties better. I have two databases that immediately come to mind that need a little bit of organizing because they have a ton of properties. So we're gonna focus on those for this video. The first is my tasks database, so let's start there. I have a task pulled up for us to get started with. You're gonna want to go into one of the pages in your database and anything that you edit on one page is going to apply to all of your pages. This task here is to film this video, which I am currently filming, so that's fun. But as you can see, there are a ton of properties here. Some of these are not necessarily going to be helpful for this task, like the household category here. So I am very much looking forward into getting these separated out so I can focus on what I need to for the tasks that I have. So to get started on customizing our layout, I'm just gonna press this button that shows up right here, customize layout or you can also come over here to the sidebar and do it from here, but it's very easy to grab it just from the top right there. And now we enter in to the layout interface. The first thing I'm going to look at is the page settings over here on the side. We have options for our inline comments as well as our page discussions. Now, I personally always like to use minimal comments because when you add a comment, it usually shifts over your entire page to create a column for your comments. And that drives me nuts. So I like to have the little icon there that just shows me when there's comments. As for the page discussions, this is going to be anything that is talked about on your page. You can either have it off or keeping them expanded is going to show your comments up here at the top of the page. So if I turn that off, you see that goes away. But I do like to have that here for any of the page discussions that do happen. Lastly, you can choose to turn off your property icons. Now, I think that takes away a lot of the fun, so I like to keep those showing. So now I'm gonna get started on my heading. This is where I'm going to optionally pin properties that I want to be able to see quickly. Now, the way that I'm going to choose which properties I want to show is to pick the ones that I know apply to most all of my tasks. For example, things like the category here, I'm always gonna want to see that. So I'm just gonna look for that one and pin it over here on the side. Other properties that I may wanna see are things like my done status here. So I'm gonna turn that one on. I also wanna see the due date, so I'll put that there and probably who it's assigned to. Most of them are assigned to me, but occasionally I have other people on here. So I will add that too. Now, as you can see, it says the maximum number of pin properties has been reached, so we cannot pin any more properties to the top of our page here. But I still have a lot of properties, as you can see in this property group over here, that need a little bit of organizing. What I am now going to do is I'm gonna pull this property group and I'm gonna put it in my side panel. All I need to do is click move to panel. The side panel stays hidden for the most part, and then you can just go into it when you need to. What I also love is that you can add sections. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna go ahead and add a section here and I'm just gonna call this task details. And I'm going to add some of the properties that are just telling me more about the task itself to this specific section. So for example, the notes property here, my priority, I'll probably put that first, focus, time commitment, and maybe the ideal due date too. I'm also probably gonna keep this sort checkbox in this area too. This is just how I keep my brain dump area clean for all of my task information. And if you want to learn more about that and my planning process, I talk about it in my 2024 Notion tour. Now the next group of properties that I have here are specifically for household products. I like to keep my household products in my task database and then when I need to purchase them again, they can become a task if needed or they go to my to buy list. 
So it's kind of part of my task database, but it's a small part of it. I don't reference it super often. So now I can just go ahead and add a section that I can keep closed and not see if I don't need it. I'm just gonna go ahead and call this one household products, and then I will add those properties in there too. So all we need to do for that is to drag and drop those specific properties into that section. Now I will say that I don't want this to be at the top. I want the task details to be at the top. So I'm just gonna go ahead and switch that around a little bit so that we have the household products down here at the bottom. And now you can see it's got a little toggle and I'll be able to close that when we're finished here. My next two properties here, this subtype and type are very specific to my destiny tasks. I haven't really talked about this in a while, but I play destiny two with my husband and I have not really put anything into notion recently, but I did put those tasks in there. So I agree, remember to do things. We haven't been as active on it, so I haven't been using it as much, but those are specifically in there for my destiny page that I have set up. I do think I go over that in my notion tour as well. So if you're curious, you can check that out, but I'm just gonna add a little section for it here so I can keep those specific properties section out from the other ones. And again, I'm gonna go ahead and drag this guy down here to the bottom so we don't see it as much as we do these task details here. And then I have three more properties that I need to decide what to do with here. These are all relation properties. This one goes to my finance widget that tells me information about what tasks need to get done for our finances specifically. This is going to show all of the information on my daily planning page. I have a little widget there that gives me an idea of how many tasks that I have to do each day. And so those two relations are how that widget operates. I do need to keep it here, but I want it to be very hidden. I don't really need to see it all the time. My seasonal closet, however, is a relation to a wardrobe page that I recently built to help me make a capsule wardrobe. And when I add clothing items that I need to buy, they get added into my task list. And then I can link which season those specific pieces of clothing go with. So what I actually think I'm gonna do with this property is I'm going to add it to my relations group down here. And so to do that, I'm just gonna go ahead and click on it and click add to layout here. And it adds a new section specifically for my seasonal closet. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and change this here to go into my relations group. And so now it's gonna show over here in that group. Now, let me see, because I don't necessarily think I want this to be showing as a page section. I think I'll keep it minimal. And you can do that too with the relations. We're gonna come back to this really quick whether you want them to be page sections or minimal. So let me go back to my properties here because I'm going to add a fourth section here for my widget relations specifically. So let me go ahead and add that in. And again, I'm gonna put this one down here at the bottom and then I can add my finance widget and my information display widget too. Now I have all of these in the side panel, so I don't necessarily mind if they're all showing because if I open that side panel, I'm totally cool to see all that extra information. I just don't want it all in my page by default all of the time, but I do think I'm gonna keep these two widget relations hiding just because that's kind of messy and I don't necessarily want to see that all of the time. So that's fine, just as it is. Now let's go over here to our relations group. As we just talked about, you can either show your relations as a page section or as minimal. You can see my content here is showing as a page section. I do like that because I think it's a little bit easier to find what you're looking for, but I don't like it for all of my relations. As you can see, I changed my seasonal closet to be minimal. So that is totally up to you. You can just come in here and double check whether these are minimal or page sections and then they will either show up here as that section or down here as a little minimal link to those pages. So now I'm gonna go ahead and hit apply to all pages here. And as you can see, a lot of those properties are now hidden. We can see the ones that I have pinned. I can see my relations here as either page sections or minimal, depending how I have set them up. And then if I want to open the side panel and see those additional properties, I can either click right here to view details or over here to view details. And then it's gonna open up that side panel for us. 
Now I have decided to hide these for now so I can just pop those open if I ever need to access them. And then I can easily see those task details that are the more important things like the priority, the focus, the time commitment, et cetera, et cetera. And I don't know about you, but this feels so much more clean. So now that I've updated my task database pages, I also want to look at my content database pages because those are also crazy. <laughs> now, this specific piece of content is an email that I put out at the beginning of October, but I think it's going to be a great example for us because I do have a media property here that I want to show in a very specific way. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. I'm gonna go ahead and click that customize layout again, and then we're going to see our layout interface open up. It looks like I've already chosen minimal comments here, which is fantastic, so I don't have to edit any of that. So I'm gonna jump right into the heading here. Right off the bat, I'm gonna go ahead and pin the post type because I do want to see that. I want to pin the date so I can see when it's going to be published. I want to pin the status, and then I also think I wanna go ahead and pin the content pillar. I forgot about this setting in my last database, but if you want to hide the backlinks, you can do that here too. I do like to do that occasionally because I don't always use this backlink option here. I'm just not quick to go to it. I usually go to my relations quicker than I go to the backlinks. So you can turn that off if you prefer, but I do find that it kind of scrunches up my pages. So again, it's up to you. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add my property group here to the panel again, just like I did before. But before I start sorting these, I think I want to add the media over here as a separate little section. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that and add it to my layout. You can see these images so much easier than you could before, and I absolutely love that. So I'm just gonna drag this right above the relations group that we have here. I just love that I can see these so much better. Now inside my property group, I'm gonna do the same thing and add a couple sections here because I do have quite a few properties. I'm going to add one for content details, just like I did for my task details. And under that, I am going to add that sort property specifically, but I'm thinking that I kind of want to add my notes and my assigned property into my page layout over here as well, because I do access those quite often from the page itself. And so having them hidden might be more of a hindrance than good for this specific case. So what I'll do is I'm gonna go ahead and add these to my layout over here as well, just so I can easily see them. Go ahead and add my notes too. And then while I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and add my brand partnerships over here as a relations group because it is a relation itself and it doesn't necessarily need to be all by its lonesome. It can be up with the rest of the relations. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that to my grouping here. And then I do think I'm gonna go ahead and show this as a page section, which it already is, so we're good to go. Now, back in my property group over here, I have a couple of other things. My URL, I'm gonna keep in the content details. My repurpose checkbox is specifically to help me repurpose content ideas, but I do not use it that frequently, so I am very happy to keep it hidden. I'm going to add a little section for that specifically here so that I can keep that nice and tidy. And then I'm going to add a section for my Pinterest pin information too. And then one more for my widget information. This information display is just like the one that I had in my task database. So I can see when I have content that needs to go out from my widget. Again, I'm just gonna add its own little section here and put it at the bottom. So now I'm going to go ahead and apply this to my pages and now I can see my media, my assigned, my notes, and my relations all up here at the top with my sidebar having my content details here as well as my Pinterest information, my repurposing information, and my widgets if I need them. I'm noticing here that my URL is hidden so I do wanna change that really quick because since it's over here on the sidebar, there is no reason that it needs to be hidden. It can go ahead and be always showing so I can easily get to it. Probably the same with my repurposed. I'm okay to keep that showing here and same with my Pinterest. 
This one I'm going to keep hidden so I don't have to see it all the time, but that should kind of clean that up over here in my sidebar a little bit better. I don't know about you, but I am loving this layout. This is so fun to be able to customize this and I love that I can see my media so much more easily now too. I feel like this is going to be huge for keeping my databases organized now. Hopefully this video has inspired you to go create your own layouts in your Notion pages and that you had fun creating mine with me. I know that I am going to be going to update the rest of my pages after this. If you like this video with the more build with me style, give it a thumbs up so I know to make more or less of videos like these in the future. In the next video, I'm going to be breaking down my entire content planning process in Notion. So if you are curious about all those properties I had in my content database, they will get answered in the next video. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. If you're wanting to stay up to date on all of the new things that Notion's adding, be sure to watch this video next, all about the new charts feature that Notion recently added as well. I will see you in the next one.